Uh, hi everyone. Good morning and good afternoon. I'm Kes Tan, the Marketing Manager for EPEN Southeast Asia, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for your time today to join us in this EPEN Experience webinar on Design Method. So in this one hour session, we are going to introduce to you EPEN Experience, a methodological step-by-step -step concept to increase engineering efficiency and design optimization. And we are also going in depth into design methods topic. So design methods is one of the eight fields of action falls under EPEN experience, uh, which Ng, he will be talking in depth later on. So today um, is myself and Ng Sisian. He is the application engineer for EPEN Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. So before we start, um, Please ensure that you are connecting to the event audio. If you can hear me now, there is no action required, but this is for those who have yet to connect to event audio. And if you have any questions along the session, please feel free to input your questions in Q&A box on the top right corner. Um, without further ado, I will start today's session. So um, a little bit introduction to EPEN today. Uh, we are a German-based company founded in 1984, headquartered in Germany. And our motto is efficient engineering, which is our business, underlying the need to continuously providing integrated and optimized engineering solutions for our clients. We are part of Friedhelm Low Group, an owner-managed group with more than 11,500 employees worldwide. And our owner is actually Dr. Friedhelm Low. Um, we are currently present in more than 50 countries, providing solutions in about 17 languages. And we are also in support of global standards. The global success today are, we have 45,000 customers about 120,000 installations worldwide. And in ePlan itself, we have over 800 employees worldwide. So um, as you can see, our clients work around the world, and so do we. We have 50 branches uh, around the world, and um, about seven branches in Germany itself. So the Malaysia office is actually the regional office for Southeast Asia country, Australia, and New Zealand. Mm, then, okay. Our clients uh, come from all various uh, industries. So we we offer no solution, no one solution off the shelf, but carefully match, very um, specific to industry. So this is actually based on our extensive knowledge from over 30 years of uh, successful collaboration with companies. Um, companies from automotive, food and beverages, oil and gas, and so on. So these are our satisfied customers around the world. Some of them might be very familiar to you, um, like Nestle, GM, Volvo, Siemens, ABB, and so on. Um, customers from our regions are like uh, Sandy, Gun Force Palm, and so on. So um, without further ado, I would like to pass the floor to Ng Sisian. He will be presenting in depth on ePlan experience and also design methods field of action. So I will pass the floor to Sisian. Okay, thank you very much, Kesh. I'm Yushen, uh, the application engineer for ePlan Software and Services. So. My main responsibility is on the consultation and the education of uh, ePlan platform and also the software and services. So a little bit about ePlan experience before we begin. So ePlan experience is actually a culmination of all the experiences that we have from uh, our customers and also our consultants and uh, engineers and uh, managers in ePlan over the past 30, 30 plus years. And through these different experiences and feedback from customers, we have came up with eight different fields of action to help you increase your efficiency and effectiveness of your engineering processes. <clears throat> so 
the first thing you need to know about ePlan experience is that it is very flexible. It is uh, applicable to any different company or independent of the size or location or industry. As you have seen earlier in the earlier slide, we have uh, experience in all different industries in electrical engineering, and all this experience has been inputted into ePlan experience with the eight different fields of action. So the eight different fields of action uh, will be introduced along the next few years. And today, we will be mainly focusing on the design methods. So the design methods, meaning the different selection and implementation of uh, different methods to efficiently construct and design your engineering needs. So nowadays, in our basic project situation, it doesn't matter uh, which type of project you're in. It can be manufacturing, it can be machining, it can be panel building. The most common situation is that from the first project, we normally copy and reuse parts of the project and bring forward to the second and third project. And when this situation arises, most often the errors are also copied. And with all the errors copied, when you find and rectify them, it will take a lot of engineering hours to test them out and also to rectify any errors that you face. However, with the experience we have, what we are actually suggesting is to change the concept of uh, reusing your data. So in the current situation, reusing data that you have from previous projects take up a small percentage of your entire engineering process. However, what we suggest is to increase this significantly using our ePlan products. And uh, in the next few topics, I will explain how we actually achieve this. So as I mentioned, we will, I will explain how these methods can be achieved using ePlan platform. So current engineering situation is that we are going through a product approach, meaning that we purchase softwares and platforms and also uh, materials to implement into our day-to-day -day engineering processes so that we can increase efficiency. However, we also suggest to go through a solution approach, which is through your day-to-day -day engineering processes, we find out the best possible fit for your solutions and come up with a better implementation and um, of course, uh, better efficiency. And this can be easily achieved with the ePlan platform. So as I mentioned earlier, ePlan platform is a platform provided by ePlan. And in this platform, there are multiple different modules available. We have our electric P8 for the electrical schematic generation and 2D panel layouts. We have our ePlan fluid for hydraulic and fluid design. We have our pre-planning, which is for basic engineering. And we have our pro panel for 3D panel design. And we have our harness pro D for the wire harnessing design. So the reason why this is called the ePlan platform is because all these different modules can be cross-integrated across your ePlan platform, meaning that I can actually start my design from electric P8 and I can finish it up with my pro panel or my ePlan fluid. And vice versa, I can also start my designing building my panel first with pro panel and continue on finishing up my design with my electrical P8 with the detailed schematics. And also, since it's integrated together, the entire reporting system for your ePlan products is automatically done and automatically updated. And most importantly, the different information between the different modules are synchronized together. Meaning when you design using electric P8 and Pro Panel or using pre-planning and Fluid or Harness Pro D and electric P8, the data across the different platforms and modules are all collaborated into one single reporting system giving you a more complete and more succinct report 
for your engineering needs. As you can also see on the far right here, we are also integrated with MCAT and PDM systems, meaning that we can actually take in files from mechanical CAD systems such as SOLIDWORKS, such as uh, Autodesk Inventor, Pro, Pro E, and etc., and put them into our ePlan platform to assist you with your engineering designs. And we are also integrated with PDM systems such as TA, Team Center, Windshield, and also SAP. And on top of this, you will see that we have what we call the ePlan engineering configuration. So the ePlan engineering configuration, or what we call EEC, is a platform to automatically generate your schematics and uh, engineering needs using your day-to-day -day data that you have standardized. Without further ado, I will go into the design methods. In this design method, I will show you two of our platforms and how it will help you significantly reduce your engineering efforts and also improve your, the quality and your efficiency of your engineering process. So the first topic will be on pre-planning. So uh, before we begin going into the details of pre-planning, uh, let me give a brief introduction about pre-planning. Pre-planning is the planning of your engineering designs. When you begin a project, before you, optic, you go into the detailed schematics or the detailed planning of your project, most often you will need to plan out the entire process or the entire schematics or the placements, the plant layouts or the machining layouts in advance. And all this planning is done via different methods such as using your normal draft paper. We can use Excel, Word files, Access files. We can use normal CADs or visuals or any other methods. Or, and this planning is what we call basic engineering. What if I tell you this method is already obsolete? So the reason why I mentioned this method is obsolete is because we have came up with a different solution for you. So this solution is using the ePlan pre-planning. So with the pre-planning, graphical design can be easily done via your graphical editor in ePlan. So you can actually plan out the entire zones, the structure of your plants or your machines, and also place in graphical views of different components like conveyor belts, grinding machines, or your PLCs, your panels, or your network de devices, or your machines and products. And when you place in all of this information, it will also populate your navigator with all the different structures in the tree view, so you can see all the different availabilities and also the, sorry, the availability of your motors or your input and outputs for your DI, for your PLCs, and also for your design needs. Other than that, you can also put in information like your PNID diagrams for your, your process automation, and also plan out the individual sensors and valves that is used in this design. Of course, for those who design using Excel files to plan out your initial engineering stage, you can also reuse this component list or sensor and actuator list or the different signals as, your, as in your I.O. devices and also import them into the ePlan platform so that you can use them directly. So let me show you a short demonstration on this. So right here, I have an empty project with no, no structure, as you can see, under my pre-planning demo one. And on my left here, you will see that I have uh, created an empty page. So to start off with, I can actually input the different structures of my plant. So as I input the different structures of my plants, I can plan out the plan out the entire structure. For example, 
whether this is plant one, whether there's a hall one, hall two, I can actually structure the entire project in a manner that it will be relevant to my actual actual implementation area. So I can begin with the initial planning of my plant structures. And after I've completed planning out my plant structures, I can continue placing in my different machining machines and designs using my macros. So for example, I have a graphical macro here of a conveyor. So as I plan out this graphical macro here, I can put in the entire thing into my actual uh, actual plant and it will be placed in the different areas and I will be able to see the different inputs and outputs applicable to this component. That means I will actually be placing an object or a graphical object to see what are the required input outputs. And not only that, I can also preset all the different requirements I need to make an initial estimate. Like for example, what type of power consumption, how many hours I need to plan this or construct this, and how many hours I need to put in the software information, and whether I have any PLC inputs and outputs. I can also put in documents that I need uh, to associate with these components. I can even put in macro information. Like for example, I have a value set of A or B, or I can usually define all the information and I can place in my function templates like what instrument is needed for this and so on. So as I move on, I can continue placing more and more items to actually match out what I will have in the in engineering situation. So for example, I can even add in grinding units. So as you see, as I add in more and more information, it will be populated in my pre-planning navigator here. So I can even put in the different rotations of this so that I can plan out my entire plant process. So once I'm done, I will have an initial structure of my engineering planning. So once I have this initial structure, I can easily filter out all my requirements. And most importantly, I can start using this information to place in my electrical schematics. into my design. So as you can see here under my EFS, currently it only has uh, main cabinet information. So I can easily just drag and drop this information and place it in under my electrical function schematics. So as I place it in, it will start populating all the different schematics associated with these components like my conveyors, my grinding units, my uh, sorry, my positioners and so on. And the most important item is because I have already standardized my work with all my previous existing designs, meaning I'm reusing old designs, but I'm making them in a more modular process or more modular design method. And by doing so, I can easily reuse this design with, without having to worry about the quality or the efficiency of when I'm implementing all of this. So as you can see, in a matter of minutes, my electrical schematics have been populated by the different functions and devices I need, like for example, my grinding units, my emergency stop systems, and also you will see my conveyor systems and so on.
so among my placeholders I have, uh, sorry, among these um, items that I place under my planning objects, I have also inserted the uh, placeholder objects. If you do not know what a placeholder object is, a placeholder object is a method used in ePlan for you to pre-design your engineering data into your schematics. It doesn't matter whether it's a part number or if it's a technical characteristic like the kilowatts or amperes or if it's a numbering system you have for the connection labels and so on. So I can actually pre-program all of this into my schematics and save them as macros. And also, for those who are not aware of what a macro is, a macro in ePlan is, is actually a block function, a smart block function, where you can store and reuse multiple variants of your single design. It can be either sections of your design or entire pages. It can be graphical, schematic, or it can also be 3D as well. So as you see, once I start placing in all the objects into my design, I will have all the designs I need, all the electrical schematics, the PLC information, and I can slowly assign them to actual PLC devices, and I can start planning out the PLC information I need. So once I have all this design, I can start by generating my reports for the structure. So for example, I can have an overview. I can have a, sorry, let me show you. So I have an overview. So from here, I can see the actual construction hours, the planning hours I will need, and the hours I will need for uh, the software to be designed. And I can even see the consumption for kilowatts, and I can have an initial value of the total price needed, and better, where it's implemented or where's the activation site. And of course, I can get a total here calculated automatically for me if I have already designed the template for this. And of course, I can continue on and get a segment overview as well and a segment plan. So segment overview means it's based on the different structure, like for plant one, the entire plant one, the total. I can even get it for the individual sections in the hall one, and also for the individual transfer systems. So I can also get a total price for each individual section needed in this engineering design. Okay, so going back to the slides. Okay. So as mentioned earlier, all the possible planning data are things like your IOs, your input outputs required, and also the engineering data like your technical characteristics, your part numbers, or the color of your cables and wires, and also documents like PDFs or Excel files that you need to associate, it, associate this with them. And of course, using the pre-planning, you can also start off your design using P PIDs, like um, instruments and tanks and WAFs. So by doing so, Let me show you. I can actually have an empty layout here. So similarly, right here I have all my grinding units and everything. I can use I can pre store all the designs that I have done previously so that when I have a customer that requires a similar design, I can start off using my macros. So as I mentioned, the macros have a variant option. Where I can store variants of the different designs in a single file. And when I store the variants of designs, I can also store the different information like all the sensors or motors or valves required for this and directly place them inside my new plant. 
So as you see, it's all populated inside here automatically. And of course, if I have uh, if I have more information like uh, information from Excel files like loops or instruments or I/O lists, I can directly import them into my ePlan interface. So I can import this information. So let me show you an example of my loops. So I can have the information pre-programmed written out in here, like for example, which plant is placed, which building, which floor, which area, which room. I can also have the information like the mounting level, the measurement value, the designations like function tags, the measuring methods, and also the range and everything written into my Excel file. And once I'm done, if I have this information, I can directly use this information and select whether it's loops, whether it's consumers, measuring points, or consumer bodies. And from here, I can target where this is supposed to be placed. For example, hall one, uh, plant one, hall one, or by individual tanks or devices. For example, if I put it in plant one, and I can import this information directly. So when I am importing this information, the information is directly outlined in my ePlan structure. I can choose to either filter it based on all the information whether it's a new information or whether it's an existing one but change or it's identical to any items I have. So currently this is a new import, so I have no change information. I have no identical ones, but I can import the new information indirectly. So once I import in, I will have my information in plant one, works one, building 10, floor one. So here I will have all the instruments I need. For example, this um, TIC, my temperature instrument, I can directly click and drag them in and place them into my PNID diagrams. And of course it will contain all the information like for example, my power consumption, my planning for each individual devices, the expenditure, and if I have any I.O. requirements, it will also be inputted along with the macros and the templates and my symbol data. So of course, if I were to re-import the information, I can check whether it's identical or it's new or it's changed. So if I have not changed the information in my Excel file, so for example here, So I can see whether it's identical or the information has been changed. So I, I didn't save it previously, so it's not available here yet. Okay, so as you see, uh, okay. So as you see with the pre-planning, I can actually plan out my entire plant and processes 
with the basic engineering requirements. As in, I can plan out all the basic requirements and I can get initial costing and also the engineering hours I need to order the components and also to construct them. And by doing so, I can significantly reduce the amount of engineering hours I require to design my plant. So in the early stage, like for example, before I'm doing a proper detailed engineering with all the connections and all the actual devices, I can actually get an estimate of what it will cost me initially before beginning this project. It will also significantly reduce the amount of quotation hours you need to prepare. And also, once you get into the detailed engineering, I just need to fulfill this by inputting the additional data, like removing the unnecessary items and also adding in the required new information or all the detailed items like the actual PLC I require or the estimate of additional I.O. points and so on. Okay, so moving on from here, we have another product that will actually help you significantly by reducing your engineering hours. By this other product is um, through our, it is used, utilized through what we call the macro technology. And moving further from macro technology, it is called the macro project. So currently, as you, as you will understand if you have done engineering design, is that most often we will be reusing a lot of our past designs and components and also standardize them to a certain extent. And by standardizing them to a certain extent, you can actually reuse this data more efficiently and more automatically. However, by reusing this data, when you have any editing or modification, it will require you uh, to take a lot of engineering hours to rectify it in all the projects it has used. However, using our ePlan macro projects, it, which is an additional function of the macro technology, you can easily store all these designs in macro forms in a library we call macro projects. And in this library, you can actually store it by different versions, variants of the design and utilize it in any project. And if you modify or update or any of these schematic or designs, it can be brought forward to your engineering projects efficiently without having to manually modify or change them one by one. So over here, I have an example of a macro project. And inside this macro project, I have stored all the different engineering designs like my schematics for my control voltage. I have all the designs for both IEC standard and an FPA standard. I have my overviews for my structures. I have even all the IO cards, input output cards, pre-designed and placed inside here. So I efficiently store them in the library. And when I do any modifications, all I need to do is go to my project data macros and generate them so it will update them and I can utilize it in any of my projects directly. However, there's an even more efficient method to use this. And this method is called the ePlan Engineering Configuration 1 or we call, what we call EEC1. And by utilizing EEC1 with the macro technology and macro project, I can automatically generate my drawings from an Excel form into my new projects. The ePlan Engineering Configuration 1 is compatible with the electric PA fluid and pro panel. And through the electric PA fluid and pro panel, I can easily set up my macro variants and also templates and placeholder and 3D macros in the macro project and use this in my Excel file and generate my projects easily without having to manually design them one by one. And afterwards, I can just add in my individual engineering items. So an example of the EC1 is that I can design everything via an Excel file. 
So this is an example where I have planned out all my Excel components, like uh, my supply page, my drives, my fluid, my PLCs, my pro panels. And by utilizing this, I can easily insert my macros, for example. I can easily insert my macros from my macro project or my macro library. So for example, I can plan out my second position. So I can see a layout of what macro is going to be used. And I can easily just place them in using a drag and drop function. I can even number my page number here, and I can even put in my information, the information I want. So I can actually pre-plan all the different requirements, different information that should be modified via my Excel file. And from here, I can easily generate this into my project that I've created. So currently this project, my generic EC1 project, is empty. So it's completely empty. And from the Excel file, since I've added in more information, I can just generate it automatically. So I can regenerate it easily. And once the generation is completed, I just have to refresh it here, and I will have the structure available. So of course, I can also uh, regenerate this using an easy method. So for example, I use page one again, ABC. And from here, I can just generate it. all my new information inside here at a click of a button. Of course, I can further this extent by generating multiple pages at the same time. I can even add in an API interface and design my entire EEC project using this um, pop-up interface with uh, my different structures like TS1, TS3. I can plan out the whether there's a second grinding unit I can just apply it and accept it on my project. I can even put in the different requirements into my options into this API, like uh, light with power socket, or whether the page description is power supply one or two. I can put in all the different requirements, like my motor with a reverse motion, or whether there's a motor, what is the motor size I need. I can put in all the IO addresses, and I can even select the parts I require. I can generate the scripts and reports, and I can even plan out my enclosure. So after I'm done, I just have to generate my entire project at a click of a button. And as you can see here, once I've generated this, 
I will have all my reports and schematics all generated automatically for me. At a click of a button. So all the configuration is done via the Excel file. And I just need to generate them into my schematic drawing. So if I do any modifications on the Excel file as well, you will also automatically be generated into my EEC project. And via this method, I can easily <coughs> design multiple panels, multiple plants at the same time using very simple methods. And the core of, core of all this is done via the macro project. So, so in conclusion, what we what I showed you today is two of the design methods that we have. And one is the pre-planning and one is the easy one. Both methods utilize a very simple method to, uh, to standardize and also make your engineering processes more efficiently. And of course, through this standardization, you can achieve higher levels of engineering by optimizing the engineering processes and reducing the unnecessary, unnecessary uh, engineering designs, like uh, for example, the grunt work that you do to, to process your initial stage engineering. And after completing the initial designs, you can easily just generate the detailed engineering drawings from them. So <clears throat> before I end this uh, presentation or webinar, is there any questions from anyone? Okay, uh, we have a question regarding P8. So uh, this question is regarding whether you can integrate ePlan to a SCADA. So uh, you, you have a TIA portal from Siemens, and currently ePlan is able to integrate with a PLC software where you can cross-integrate the information from your PLC program, like for example, your structure of your PLC drawings, uh, sorry, your structure of your PLC racks and devices, and also the IO information along with the, the destination for your IO points. So this data can be cross integrated between ePlan drawings to your PLC software. And by integrating this data, every time you update this data from your ePlan drawings and also from your SCART, from your PLC software, this data will be automatically updated in ePlan as well. That means you can import and export this information directly. And also, if you further expand this integration within ePlan P8, you can also automatically generate your, your ePlan engineering drawings for the PLC information by importing this information from your PIA portal. So uh, there's another question here. So um, as for the macro project, uh, this is a question regarding the macro project. So the macro project is a function that's already integrated into all of your ePlan interfaces. So it's already available in all ePlan interfaces and it can be used directly. So it is, uh, there's no additional cost, it's just a small activation on your ePlan interface to use the macro projects.
Okay, um, we have an, uh, the same question. So I think um, it is better if I can get an email of this uh, inquiry so that we can uh, find out the exact requirements that you require. So as you can see on the presentation here, we have our email address for me and also our sales line. So if you have um, more specific inquiries, maybe we can set up a, a session to discuss on this. However, I think we are running out of time today. So any other inquiries can be directed to our sales line or directly to me. And my email is available in front here. So I will pass the floor back to Cass. And um, thank you very much for attending our webinar. Okay. Um, once again, thank you for joining us. And I hope to meet you again in our next ePlan Experience webinar, which will take place um, sometime next year. So for the next session, we are going to focus on other fields of action like platform setup and product structure. So um, with that, thank you and have a nice day. I will end the meeting now.